Hello and welcome everyone, this is Dmitry and we are having another network programmability stream. Today is part 28 and we will be talking about SALT, um, which is... A, well, I'm not actually sure how to, to describe SALT in one sentence. Um, it's kind of like, I would say, automation framework. Um, mostly for configuration management, but not... not uh, not only it's more focused on event driven automation but i'm not sure if you will be able to cover that today um, it, it's kind of similar to ansible but it has a little bit different focus as i told you it's more about event driven approach um, but yeah we'll see so um yeah before we go into today's topic and as always, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat. I will be happy to to discuss them, um, regardless if it's about the topic of the stream or, or not. Um, so before we will dive uh, deep dive into today's topic, well, I don't, I shouldn't say deep dive because I hope you'll go through hello world today uh, successfully, but we will see. So uh, yeah, before doing that, um, let's let me share with you a couple of things that I want to share. So f first of all, uh, tomorrow is my work anniversary. It will be um, one year I'm in my current role. So um, I'm at Cisco right now for a little bit more than uh, what three years, and. Um, uh, one year ago, I changed. I changed the role, and I started working as a systems engineer in enterprise sales, and where I was doing mostly software development projects, um, ninety-five percent of my time, um, and it has been a great experience. And after one year, I'm still happy to um, to to start a new working day, to, to work on the things that I'm working on. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a job that I love a lot. I love very much. And uh, I do have an amazing team and amazing, amazing uh, boss as well. Uh, so I would like to say thank you folks. And uh, obviously I will, I will, uh, you know, share some thoughts directly with you as well but i decided that um stream is also a good place to share how i feel um since um yeah i i have an opportunity to work on a lot of different software development stuff including network automation uh, projects and um, yeah so very very excited hopefully uh, it will be many more years to come um, okay, uh, another piece, um, b before I get too, too sentimental, another piece is, um, uh, well, a couple of other things that I discovered during the last week. So one of them was um, this project called Schnack, um, or Schnack, I, I have no idea how to pronounce it. So, and this is a, a system, a commenting system for your static website. So it's very similar to, let's say, discuss. If you if you know what discuss is, um, and it's very similar to ISO, which is well, discuss is cloud hosted, ISO is self hosted, uh, and I think it's somewhere in the middle. So Schnack is self hosted system where you can use uh, OAuth, and it's very lightweight. And I just discovered it today in the morning, and. Uh, I must tell it looks very good. So uh, the JavaScript takes only eight kilobytes. All of your co comments are under your um, control. So they are hosted on your server. There are a bunch of options and they have OAuth. So you can log in with like Twitter or GitHub or Google or Facebook. And at the very bottom here is the example of comment section, which is right here. Uh, and yeah, I, I think it actually looks looks great. So, um, I potentially I will give it give it a shot. 
since my personal blog is uh, hosted using JKL, which is static website generator, and for comments I use uh, ISO, which is Python self-hosted uh, commenting system. Uh, this looks like some improvement, so yeah, maybe I will give it a shot, but check it out if you are hosting some personal blog or, or something. Um, now another another thing is um, Python 367 and 371 were released today or yesterday, I don't remember, and um, um, I have no idea about changelog, but usually what it means is that um, this is a point where people start using the um, uh, the latest Python in production. So usually, like when there is a first minor release in the um, yeah, in the in the train, so like three seven one, this usually means that it's already good to go for your um, for your production. So I have been using Python 3.7 for a couple of months now since release, uh, not 100%, but um, when I could. And I have stumbled upon a bunch of issues with third party libraries, like uh, I, I think uh, I had problem with IOHTTP, I had problem with, uh, with PyYAML, I had problems with uh, Celery. Um, so I, I don't think Celery supports 3.7 yet. So for uh, some projects I had to fall back to Python 3.6, but in general, um, so far so good. So um, yeah, um, if you haven't yet migrated, um, you know, check it out. Maybe you can upgrade without, uh, without any problems. Um, Okay, now another another two things. So one of them is um, simple smartsheet library. And this is a library that I I am working on mainly because uh, I need it for work. And um, basically, it's a lib it's another Python API wrapper which allows you to to interact with smartsheet. And smartsheet is uh, cloud hosted uh, Excel sheets. Let's put it this way. Um, and they have actually more, they have a library which is quite good, but they do miss some functionality and they don't seem to be active on PRs. Um, so I, you know, I raised an issue and asked if there is, if, if it would make sense to um, submit the PR, but no one replied for months. So it doesn't seem the case, and I do need some func some custom functionality that I already implemented, and I am maintaining my fork, and I don't want to do that anymore. So I gave up on doing that, and I almost wrote the well, almost finished the library, uh, which allows you to for simple use cases a little bit more. Uh, it gives you a little bit better user experience. So yeah, I really have to finish it as soon as possible since my other project depends on it. But this is going to be released in public domain as well. So on Py API, um, look for simple smart sheet one. Once it, it is released, if uh, you need to do something with smart sheets. Now another piece uh, is um, at work, I had to interact with one system which um, provided SOAP, SOAP API and this was my first interaction with um, uh, with SOAP um, and while uh, well I have to tell you SOAP is just just pain <laughs> uh, it's yeah it's just pain <laughs> uh, it's quite extensible but it's just hard to work with, especially in my case, it was my first experience with SOAP. Um, I didn't appreciate um, the API, but um, I managed to get done what I had to do. And I did it using this library called Zip, uh, which is a Python SOAP client. And I must tell you, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, so I am quite satisfied with the library and how, how it works. 
um, especially there is one mod uh, where you well you pip install and you can use it but there is also if you invoke it with python minus m zip and you provide the link to your soap soap api entry point uh, it will uh, it will parse for you everything available in the schema so every single object and every single available operation for you and it will give you a list with types and so on and so forth which was super nice and it helped me a lot so um yeah i'm this library uh seems seems to work pretty pretty great and uh even though i didn't appreciate soap api as such i really do like the library um yeah and that's pretty much it uh for today uh uh and now we can wrap up the stream uh no of course not oh uh, one more piece um yeah uh which i didn't put on the list so last time we started to work on a, another of my open source projects which is python netconf yank library um i haven't came up with a good name yet uh, if you have any good name please uh, share it with me right now i uh, i think i settled on nc yank or something like this for um, you know for import statement at least um yeah and so it will be something like pip install in siang or something and to remind you the idea behind this library was to simplify using netconfiang in python so you could load your data from something like yaml uh, and um, it will automatically convert it uh, for you to the um to the appropriate netconf rpc as well as you would be able to do a diff between what you want to obtain versus what is on the device and apply only diff between um, between the, your network device and what you uh, what you want to get as a result uh, there is obviously a lot of work to be done yet so last time we started working on it and uh, basically we wasted uh, three hours trying to um, write a dicto xml converter which i failed to do um well we we got some partial results but it was it was not very productive i was very disappointed after the stream that we didn't get it done so um yesterday i was eating out and um and i took pen and paper with me and i decided to give it a go and so what i came up with is basically this algorithm that basically I I wrote on uh, using pen and paper um, it's almost Python it's not 100% Python but uh, yeah um, I started converting it like writing it to, uh, you know on computer just today there are a couple of things that I have to take care of but I'm confident that uh, um, that this will work so um, yeah uh, apparently sometimes you just stuck at something for hours like it was on previous stream literally like it was two and a half hours me trying to write this and this i was able to write maybe between 15 minutes on using pen and paper um so um yeah i'm excited that i got my confidence back after i did this um because i was very stressed out after last stream that oh you know i have been programming in python for six years and i couldn't implement a very simple and it is a very simple recursive algorithm um so yeah this helped me uh, to get my confidence back so uh i'm happy with that okay so um this is all uh from the um some news things that i want to share with you guys uh it's have been uh, 40 minutes uh, which is good um now the topic of today's stream is going to be sold before we all start working with this um there are a couple of disclaimers first of all um uh right as of right now i know uh 0 0.0005 or of imaginary units about salt 
I haven't used it at all. So I have like no idea what, uh, well, I have some idea about what I want to do, but I have no idea how to do it without. So this is the first disclaimer. So if you're watching this in the recording, um, well, um, it depends if you want me to, to go through the past to, if you want to see how a person who knows nothing about something, uh, tries to learn it on the fly. So this would be a good invest investment of your time. If you're looking for something like a salt tutorial, this stream and this recording is not going to be it. Uh, so we'll be struggling a lot. I remember my first Ansible stream where uh, for one and a half hours I was trying to uh, find an error in my YAML um, and Ansible error was not really helpful. So I bet it will be very similar experience today, but that's all right. So this is the first thing. So I know nothing about salt. Uh, the only thing that I did is I watched a presentation from, I think, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly. I'm very sorry, but I I think I, I will do it correctly. I think it's Mircha. So uh, this guy and um, he's, I think he's one of the maintainers of um, napalm right now and he and he is also doing a lot with salt on network automation front um so and he also wrote the book uh, network automation at scale um so i was watching his talk at ripe i think one month ago so um let me see if i will be able to find it so uh, twitter Let me see, so now this ripe. Yeah, this one. So um, I was watching this 15 minutes presentation. This is the only thing I know about salt. So as you can guess, this presentation is 15 minutes. So you couldn't learn a lot about salt after 15 minutes. So this is my only uh, experience so far. It's actually pretty recent. Um, okay, now another disclaimer, disclaimer two, and I think this is very important for today's stream. I have to admit that I am very biased um, in uh, this space, in space of configuration management tools and automation frameworks. So, um, and I I have already negative bias towards salt. So this may affect what I'm going to say and how I'm going to, uh, to cover this. So also keep this in mind. Um, everything is going through the prism of experience and knowledge of the person who is, who is, uh, I don't know, delivering presentation or stream or whatever that is. Um, so, um, in my, yeah, I, I do have negative bias as of today. It's the main reason why that I was using Ansible for a couple of months. Um, we had a bunch of streams about Ansible. Um, it looks nice at first, but then I started to work, uh, well, I, I had the project where I had to do more complex stuff. And I got really discouraged and disappointed in a whole family of products of so all uh, of family of um, DSLs where, you know, this automation framework should say, okay, write your stuff in the YAML and, you know, declaratively very easy. You don't need to know Python, blah, 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 blah. And then when you actually start doing some trying to solve business problems with the uh, frameworks that you chose, you stumble upon problems and you have to write your custom functionality and it's not always a great experience. So I was negatively discouraged by uh, Ansible, maybe what, five months ago, four months ago, and I switched to Nornir, which is Python network automation framework where uh, you don't really write declaratively in like YAML file your tasks, you write your tasks in Python code. 
and this is where my uh, current state is state of mind is where I think this is the right approach for network automation writing Python code um, so uh, this is where my negative bias is coming from I don't believe um, I'm going to get a lot by using salt okay so uh, yeah I had to I had to share beforehand because you know um, so you also take my opinion with a grain of salt um, yeah so let's let's get started and as I told you I have no idea where to start really so um, well pro I, I don't even know what language salt is written uh, in I think it's Python but I'm not 100% sure so let's just go ahead and try uh, finding different resources on salt so for network automation oh and by the way I do have my two CSRs here as usual so um, I have my CSR dev and I have CSR 3 both of them are running Cisco SXC 1681 and thus I will be using for my test today so uh, let's uh, open a couple of links here um, we'll see and I also would like to see uh, no not napalm so um, yeah it's because um, even even if the product is great or something if it's hard to start then it's already something something negative I would say um, okay this is some demo uh, let's also take this and one additional thing salt github I want to see if they okay they have a code here and okay so yeah salt is actually written in python too so I you see here set up i salt stack my software complex is a company salt is a new approach to infrastructure management built on dynamic communication but this doesn't tell me much um, engage soul stack developing soul stack okay salt open let's see section contains instruction to install salt uh, Okay, we'll skip this for now. Let's see what people on Reddit say. Uh, I'm familiar with Ansible, you can use proxy minutes. Oh, I I also, I think, got some glimpse about um, like how it works in general. Like, well, at least this, by default, you have the salt master in as part of architecture, which is your, I guess, like control instance of salt. And then on the machines that you want to manage, you have uh, you have um, minions. You have excuse me. You have salt minions. But when we are talking about um, when we are talking about network automation, you can't really install any kind of agent on the um, network device most of the time. Uh, it's changing now with stuff like um, on box hosting. Uh, but um, you can't really use this approach so they have what is called proxy minion uh, and if I understood correctly for every single device you need one proxy minion which would be another kind of like instance small instance which will talk directly to the device and this is what is mentioned here you can use proxy minions there are going to be very many official integration options but okay this is two years ago Systems oriented option, but only because network vendors haven't made anything with this. Okay, and then Mircha posted the link. Let's also open up. Um, uh, 
Okay. So I'm not going to, you know, to read like everything, but if something uh, ca uh, catches my eye to get started, uh, this is what I'm going to do. So, um, okay, this is already something that kind of gives me at least some idea. So here's some, I, I, right now I have no idea how to work with this. Let's look here. Name, palm, salt. Let's look on uh, requirements that he had uh, at Cloudfire, uh, and which was a motivation to use um, salt. Find reliably and fast relevant details. Uh, okay, MAC addresses, IP addresses, uh, ARP tables, MAC address tables. Okay, this is a stuff that can be achieved in Napalm. Schedule jobs to make sure the config is consistent. Um, okay, so kind of like cron ish. Without running manually command, yes, system will do that for you. Parallel execution doesn't matter if you manage a single device or 1000. The response time will be the same. Okay, this makes sense to me. Um, this is one of the biggest problems with uh, Ansible right now. It's very slow for a big number of devices. Abstracted in Wagner vendor agnostic configurations. Well, okay, this has nothing really to do with salt. This is about Napalm mostly. Native cache. Uh, LTP neighbor tables, which don't change very often, you can change the data. <clears throat> okay, so getting LDP details parsed can be achieved with Napalm as well. REST API, well, for the system, okay. HA, GPG pull from Git or SVN. Um, architecture, okay. The general picture is hub and spoke is a master controlling cell several minions. Okay, so this was this is what I was talking about. So you have some server instance or master instance, which I guess will run like all the time like daemon, and then a minion server is installed, a uh, salt minion. This is currently impossible on network devices when they still prefer to keep the platform closed. Blah blah blah. For this reason, Salt introduced proxy minion. So proxy is not a different platform; it's just another process forked for each minion representing a network device. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, here you have one master instance and you have proxy minions, where uh, uh, it's just one separate process. Uh, each minion is a separate process, and every well, it's one minion per network device. Emulating behavior of salt minion, but basically still have been spoke, but with virtual minions. It's also worth looking at the speed. The connection is established just once and kept open. Anytime you execute the command, the session is ready and delivers the data request almost instantly. Okay, here is um, I do have uh, I do have something here to say, and just reading this uh, already gives me something that. Um, raises some question marks and um, and um, here's the thing if this is what what the behavior is um, you have to have proxy minion okay for every separate network device um, which is basically we already established that salt is python so basically it's a separate python process um, let me see, salt minion, mm, I'm not sure if it's uh, like separate or, or not separate, I'm pretty sure that it's also in Python. So try to think this from logical perspective, okay? So um, you have one proxy minion, one process per each device. This is very similar to running something like multiprocessing uh, in Python to be able to run a bunch of jobs at the same time. This is what also Ansible does really. So um, he, 
here though there is a li little bit different scaling i mean i guess the proxy minion can sit on any machine so we can have like five proxy minions here five proxy minions there but there is big but which is from my perspective already um is something to worth considering in general spawning another python protest is gives a bunch of overhead and it's already will be much less efficient than just running a bunch of threads okay so what this also results in is that you need to uh, in, if you have a big network you have to scale your servers where you run your minions horizontally um, most likely with something like I don't know number of cores or whatever that is so you need big and expensive machines uh, to run um, to run this um, if you're if you have some kind of scale requirements um, I can assure well I don't want to say I can assure you without giving proof but if you write if you would write something um, with Python and let's say I think I uh, or just simple threads, um, your scaling would be much better. Um, since you will not, you will not need to, well, you will still need to scale horizontally at some point, but in general, uh, in general, if you think about all of the operations that we are doing for network automation, we spent this amount of time to calculate some kind of data, like, I don't know, Jinja template or whatever that is, and we spent this this amount of time let me see this so this amount of time for computation and this amount of time to uh, waiting for the device to uh, run this okay and give a response back so uh, conceptually again conce conceptually um, my guess would be that something like Python async IO would perform much better uh, if you have a scaling needs. But again, this is all, all just my thoughts. I haven't run any tests, I barely know salt, but you know, I would just want to share with you what I uh, what I think. Um, there is some uh, question or comment in chat from all, all Thug Muffin. Uh, we have been working on Napalm based automation tool at work. Also one person took it over and doesn't know how to write good Python. So it's a huge mess. I'm sorry. Um, so, and tell me this, I, I do have a question for you. Uh, is it enough for you what Napalm offers plus community drivers? Is it enough or you end up um, writing your own modules or drivers or whatever that is? So this would be the, my first question. Another question do you use it mostly for um, getting the data or for configuring the data? Uh, very curious about that. But yes, I mean, if people, you know, if someone is working on Python project who doesn't know Python, this is not the best idea. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, let's continue going through the um, through this uh, uh, blog post. It's also worth looking at the speed. Oh, okay, we already, anytime you need to execute commands, the session is ready to deliver the data requested almost instantly. So this is true, but again, you have an overhead of a bunch of Python processes when with threads you would have less overhead. So for example, in Ornier, by default, well, not by default, the only method you have that is built into the framework is threads and we also do cache uh, connections so connections are uh, opened once uh, as well and stored as an object how to use okay proxy minion config under the fire directory as file roots default is etc salt states master config file create a sls descriptor in the napalm proxy documentation say h1 responding to the host name okay so far 
I don't understand anything here. I have no idea what the CLS means uh, and so on and so forth. But yeah, let's let's keep going forward. Um, no, this is the same blog post, I guess. Let me close this. Um, it's going to be very short. One of the easiest approaches is using Docker, even though you may not know about a lot of containers yet. We do, we had a bunch of streams about containers. It's a good practice to ensure there is no version mismatch between the master and minions connected. So build an image uh, uh, which you can use and start. Okay, so uh, this looks good. I don't want to install anything on my Mac. Uh, so let's see what do we have here. Yeah, so we have a version here. So docker run salt master IT every executing this command it starts a new container identified by the name salt master. Uh, why would you put your okay no I, I don't want to say anything. It starts a new container identified by the name and ID. I why would you want to specify ID manually? But okay. Now you have a salt master running on your machine. To get into the container for the salt master, you can execute this uh, and it will be bash and you need salt proxy minions. Uh, we need a separate container for every device. Um, there is another image. Okay, let's look at this too. Uh, okay. This and this. We'll start the container with the name proxy using the image this to which we send in my environmental variable proxy ID uh, which is the ID of oh okay so now I think I understand why would you want to do that proxy which is the ID of proxy minion running is this container which may be different than the name of container itself and level lock Starting to play with uh, salt works for the first time, you may want to have logging set up to debug. Okay, and there is Docker compose file. Woohoo! Even though it is simple, executing these commands manually and fun, which is there is Docker compose. Um, and there is Docker compose. Okay. Uh, I don't like, I don't like make files. Uh, so let's do this. We will copy this first, and I will change the version uh, as well. So let's go to our uh, network programmability stream. Uh, let me make my font bigger. Okay, so let's create a new folder uh, called salt and uh, we'll create a file docker compose yaml uh, we'll copy this uh, we will use a new version of this thing uh, container name Let me take this tag, the latest one. Okay. So version blah blah blah, salt master, salt proxy, container name, salt proxy, salt minus proxy minus proxy ID, and host name is proxy ID. And I have to, I have to, what? I have to put proxy ID, I guess, manually. Um, it's just fine. Um, 
put all of these proxy ID dummy and um, yeah we'll have two of those so salt proxy Mm. By the way, let me see Docker compose start several um, instances of one service. <clears throat> So I mentioned the Docker API has changed. I'm dating my answers. It's it's one must okay. Minus minus scale up five. Uh, we can specify this in compose file currently. They didn't reduce scale option for version two point two and two point three, but removed it for three point oh. This you would need to know to know older version of Docker Compose tool. The current version. <laughs> I got. I, I love Docker Compose, folks. Um, actually, you know what? Let me let me check something. So, um, dev uh, and in dev, I'm going to do one check. Let's say um, let's say Alpine. Um, I want to check this, um, uh, I want to check this scale option, um, I don't need volumes, I need, then if I'm setting up the proxy ID, then, uh, Let me remove this for a second and image will be alpine and nothing here and nothing here and this will be let's say up i just want to test how scale option works since i don't know and we, let's also have um let's say nginx and then image nginx as well so and i want to scale my app uh, so let's go to salt. Uh, let's see docker compose minus minus version uh, 122 okay so docker compose uh, up minus f docker compose minus dev yaml um, minus d uh, scale um, scale uh, up five two. Uh, I did something wrong uh, yeah so up should be after minus f option so minus d up minus d uh what happened here oh uh there is the um, yeah yeah so yes yeah, this is what i wanted so i uh, sold up one so up two and if i say docker um Docker P PS uh, and why did it stop? What? Why? Why is this stopped? Oh, um, yeah, about that. Um, the Alpine container. By default runs shell which exits them this is unfortunate um what else can i do here well i can try let's say redis, redis. so docker compose down 
is the oh the car compost. I remove orphans. Orphans. Okay. Proxy ID variable is not sell, defaulting to a black string, whatever. Wait, what? No, it, it should work. Okay, version and jinx ready is. Um, image ready okay so uh, again the previous command and scale uh, ready to um, yeah okay so now let's do docker ps docker ps and I have to stop a couple of other containers uh, docker stop that comes explorer docker stop um, selenium okay now I do have my um, two redis containers I know that this is not really relevant for um, salt but I want to understand what will be the host name here so you see when we are scaling it's assigning numbers like one two and this is what we actually need um, now uh, let's do uh, okay what exec name um, cut etc host name okay but the host name is put as a unique ID of the container um, let me check something what if uh, docker put um, set container name and its host name oh with minus h option okay so if I do this with minus h uh, host name from the compass. You know what, I'm... Mm, let me see this. DB server is reachable at the hostname DB database or on the network. Um, let me do additional thing. Print end. Uh, okay, hostname is this. I don't see how I can do do what I want now is this version 2.1 he wanted to specify here the host name
Yeah, this is the reason why it's 2.1, so that this hostname instruction is available. Um, this instruction is not available in uh, Docker Compose 3 plus. So let's actually check here version 2. Now it's the hostname. Hmm. This hostname is also not here. Okay. Container name. I will go back to the blog post. Um, I am trying to understand why we would need to have that. So proxy ID environmental variable must be set for the service. Um, but I'm looking forward how it can be used. So I guess proxy ID. Let me actually check. Let's say salt uh, proxy ID. I guess the proxy ID is a host name which is going to be uh, used. The minion ID that this proxy is, will assume this is a required. I want to see an explanation for this. Proxy process are no longer forked off in uh, controlling minion, instead they have their own script, which takes mostly the same arguments and the sta standard salt minion, which Thus, with addition with proxy ID, this ID that the sole proxy will use to identify itself to master. Proxy configurations are still best kept in pillar and... Okay, let's... Oh, this is a nice diagram, I like it. Okay, salt master, salt proxy process, salt minion, um, which can like manage a server or something. Now, so proxy can talk to a network device uh, or some something else. Minion controller one, minion control two. I'm curious how this proxy ID is, is actually used. Um, right now, I, I do lack an understanding of um, like the whole architecture, so. Um, proxy, proxy type, network switch. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I, I want to try going off the script here. Okay, so what we are going to need so dot master pillar states etc salt master etc salt pillar etc solar states okay um volumes etc salt proxy you know what i think for one example i will just leave it simple um so we will need to provide proxy id and we will need to provide log level Depends on soul master. Okay. Host name. So let's do the following. So um <sighs> docker. Oh, let me take the previous command. Okay, I removed it, um, removed my dev containers. So uh, let's, uh, we will have to provide proxy ID variable 
Oh, um, since it's Docker Compose, I can do this. Uh, environment log level. I I want to check something. Docker Compose and variables. I forget if um, my dot env file is going to be taken into account. I don't think so. Um, in the file well I can do in the file though pass multiple uh, environmental variables through um, service containers with the env file option just like the run uh, this okay or I could just pass with minus e Yeah, I will do this with minus e. Okay, so I need log level and I need proxy ID. And then the proxy ID, I will just put number like one. <clears throat> uh, it says docker compose sub minus d. Okay. I uh, think I'm ready. So um, this will be Docker Compose um, up minus E log level. Um, uh, yeah, so log level debug. Okay, log level debug. Um, minus e proxy id proxy id r1. D. Uh, what did I do wrong? Um, oh, it says Docker Compose run. Uh, damn. Well, okay, um, no. So there are a couple of pieces here. So one of the piece is uh, we have to replace this proxy ID here, but we also need to pass these environmental variables inside of the container. Uh, so let's do the following, let's create Uh, no. Um, dot env file. You'll put here um, log. Well, we have to put here only proxy ID. So proxy, proxy ID is equal to R1. So this option is going to be put uh, inside of the here automatically. Now we'll still need to pass my environmental variables. And if I want to do it this way, I have to set them up locally. Okay, yes. Okay, this will be fine. So if I do this, and now I do the following. Um, okay. 
so if I do this correctly, my container name should be salt proxy r1 and inside of the container my host name should be set to r1 and um, log level should be debug uh, let me see if there, there are some no there are no comments in the chat okay This takes a while. So I think what is one gig each. Um, uh, what is this? I have no idea what is this window. Uh, it seems like it's from top notes, but oh, okay, yeah. Right. I may have a problem. No, it seems all right. Okay. So what happened here? Can I start service? OCI runtime create fail, starting container. Are you trying to mine a directory onto a file? Check if specified postpass exists. I'm trying to mine a directory onto a file. Um, did I? Set it up wrong. Um, okay, hmm. I will do one thing just for test and I will bring it back. Mm, and this worked. Okay, so this was actually a mounting problem. Um, now it's the Docker PS. Uh, Docker PS. So, uh, okay, two containers salt proxy R1, salt master. Good. And some ports, which we didn't specify here. All right, um, master proxy proxy R1. Now to test uh, that it is what I need. So I need to say Docker exec name of the container and let's say cat etc hostname or just hostname. Container is not running. I. Uh, what? Okay, my salt proxy has died. Uh, so let's see what's going on there. Docker logs. Uh, no proxy key found in pillar or ops for ID one. Check your pillar. Salt proxy are ported. No proxy key found in pillar or opts for ID R1. No proxy key found. Trying to connect to this. NPC case 777. Thank you for following. Okay. By the way, I right now I remembered where did I see salt before um, in use. So it's viral. So viral uses salt actually for 
for almost everything. So like downloading new images, uh, checking a uh, connection with NTP, with licensing server, all this stuff. Okay, now it seemed that like the code run, but it, you didn't get what I wanted. And it just crashed. So um, let me think. If I rerun this, you know, yeah, I'm going to do the funk. So I'm going to uh, run this again. And I have to be very fast. Docker locks. Okay, first name. Yeah, it's just shutting down. So I think it's just didn't find some configuration or whatever that is. So I have to try. Um, checking that yeah so far well I, I can't judge right now if it's successful or not it seems like it's working but um, but maybe it isn't <laughs> Let me see the repo as well. Seven months ago, Docker Compose. Oh, um, um, let's do this. So if I do this, then it complains about incorrect volumes. By the way, let me also see Docker, Docker um, uh, images grab salt. Okay, proxy 800 max and master 400 max. Well, okay, can I start service? Okay, so this this is definitely mounting problem. So I don't think I can actually put uh, the pass with uh, with dot. Um, so um, I think it's. I can put it like this though. No, it's still it's not working. Cost not a directory. Um, I think I should go back to the version stated in the blog article. Oh yeah, so okay, if I do this, this is definitely incorrect. Um, because yeah. I'm going to test something. So um So volumes minus, um, let's say master PVD master will be mapped to slash master. Okay. So if I do this and now I do um, docker 
compose down let's say docker compose um, minus f docker compose uh, def yaml uh, up minus d um, okay so right now I have my two test containers salt and nginx and I want to check um, if I mounted the directory correctly so I will say docker run uh, this and ls minus la uh no no oh, no 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 um docker exec and then the directory master is uh, there so if i say ls minus la slash master uh this directory is there now if i say uh touch and then master test touch no, touch um slash master slash temp txt uh, now here I should be able to see my file which I did so I created a file and send container and it was there so uh, yeah uh, this should work ITC uh, salt proxy um, pvd slash proxy let's also create directory called pvd uh no directory called proxy and also let me see who is uh, an owner okay it's me so uh this is fine so proxy tc salt proxy blah 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 okay this looks good to me so now i have to say docker uh, Compose minus F down. And now we can try this. The current compose up minus D. This doesn't make sense. Did you see salt master not a directory? Are you trying to mount a directory onto a file? Uh, damn uh, and this was problem for salt master though so um, okay it is salt master cost not a directory um okay one more try so if i do docker run minus it minus minus rm this and i will say shell and let's look on directory structure so uh, ls la tc salt M and master is uh, okay oh master is a file it's not a directory okay now it all makes sense so if i do cut idc uh, salt master yes okay so this is just a config file so exit okay so the problem was this so um this slash master is the file these are directories uh, and then slash proxy i guess it should be a file so i will delete this and i will delete that um, and if i do down again and up up minus d what again um i keep creating the 
Oh, because my file doesn't exist. So we are failing. Okay, now I think I understand. So um, let me do one additional test for the salt proxy as well. So if I do docker run it minus ram this shell and cut etc salt uh, proxy and minions those are actually files that so those are not directories okay i think i understand now so um here i'm saying we are mounting this file but this file doesn't exist so we are failing here and then we don't have this file as well so we will be failing here so for now until i create master and proxy files i can't comment those out i need to delete my master directory uh, and um, yeah, and I should be able to rerun this. Uh, so down and uh, up minus D. Okay, and now both of them are up. So as if I say Docker PS, I have my two containers. If I say Docker run Docker exec uh, salt master. Um, Hostname. The hostname is salt master. If I do the same thing on uh, salt uh, proxy r1 hostname, it says r1. Uh, yeah, this actually all makes sense to me now, and it's up and running. So yeah, the problem was that I didn't have a files. Uh, so we got it up. Okay, let's look. Okay, so far I don't see any questions in chat, Let, let's continue. So, blah, 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 blah. We did this, all this is fine. To start container for the master, another one for dummy proxy. is defined in dummy pillar SLS file. Uh, let me see what is SLS file. The dummy proxy will use the dummy proxy module specifically designed for testing. Uh, so proxy proxy type dummy pillar master and proxy files uh, let's actually go ahead and download those so um, let's create a file called master um, and this broke uh yeah so this is master and proxy um proxy proxy okay um okay master let, let's kind of like try to walk through this so this proxy says uh my Master is salt master. Okay, so this is a host name. So we will actually try communicating with salt master here. Uh, all of this stuff I don't understand what this means. Multi processing false. Okay, and here we say master will have these directories for use. Okay, so I guess, and again, I as I don't have experience with salt, this is just my opinion. Okay, but based on what I saw. We spin up a master which is a server which is listening on some ports uh, and we saw we were trying communicating on ports 4505 and 4506 uh, and then we spin up our minion and then minion has some kind of its own ident identification information and it also seems to be referring to, referring to master here by and this should be like a host name or something so um, Proxy will try communicating to master, probably letting know the master that, okay, I am a proxy or something. So you can use me for the tasks or something. And this is my understanding of this. Uh, so far, uh, yeah, we will be, I copied the content from this, uh, from this uh, GitHub repo. 
uh, let's probably copy pillars as well um, I should have just get clones the reaper I must tell you um, okay uh, I will not copy paste so that I kind of like um, start um, you know getting used to the whole thing even though I don't think I am going to use um, salt for my needs but you know why not okay so dummy pillar sls uh, this will be proxy and we have to specify our proxy type uh, which is a yaml file honestly if they named it yaml file it would be a little bit less confusion i guess genus Okay, let's try Junus. Junus. Uh, this will be proxy proxy type Junus. I don't have Junus, but I will kind of like just follow along. So host uh, non-existent Junus. Well, actually, I do have some Junus in my lab, but I have to spin it up. So I don't know what to do. This sample com username admin admin okay let's see uh what let's see they have napalm Nap napalm napalm pillar napalm pillar so proxy type is napalm and driver driver and i have to look, look up a driver for cisco s so napalm um uh, napalm python uh, documentation uh, selecting right driver, right driver is called iOS. Okay, so driver iOS, uh, and um, <clears throat> driver iOS uh, host example.com username test. Okay, so Cisco, Cisco, and the host will be. Um, 10, 48, 18, uh, 30. Uh, and I also have to rename this to pillar as well. Uh, by the way, folks, uh, if you have any ideas for future streams, don't hesitate to let me know either on the stream, offline, Twitter, using any kind of means of communications. Especially it's important because I'm actually running out of projects that I want to cover, at least these different tools. Uh, I do have ideas, don't get me wrong. So, but I'm, you know, we have like two types of streams. One of the type of the streams where I develop something, it may be some kind of like open source library or something or some ideas that I have in mind. And I noticed that um, those are boring for people since it's just like plain Python uh, and sometimes I may like you know do constructs that are not familiar to everyone but also um, another type of the stream is where I take some like tool like Ansible like salt like Napalm and I try to use it as a user uh, so and those seem to get more attention from the audience more interesting to the audience and I am I'm running out of the options for the second thing. So I also don't want to take every single net DevOps or DevOps tool and just cover it just because um, it should have some value to like, it should have some value, you know, like, and probably I shouldn't have said this, but um, you know, I, for example, I don't want to cover something like chef or puppet because I don't see it as a go-to 
tool for any kind of network automation. Uh, and I don't want to to trans to transform this stream to DevOps DevOps um, stream. It's never a programmability first. So when you know, like, it seems like Ansible and Salt um, seems to be popular. So that's okay. I'm going to cover those. But Chef Puppet probably not. Um, so I'm running out of those different options that I want to cover on the stream. Uh, but I still have a lot of ideas for like me actually writing code for some open source. Uh, so yeah, if I will not have enough, I will always fall back to those. So yeah, any kind of ideas, let me know. Maybe you will like, I don't know. I don't know. I, we covered so many things during the year already. So uh, yeah, uh, let me get, get back to this. Uh, okay, this is... This is done, napalm, and this top, I think it has some special meaning. Yeah, it seems to have some special meaning. Um, base. Okay, so this seems to be like, it is, I don't know. It seems like to be a description of possible modules that you can use. Um, uh, Juno's box, napalm box, dummy. Dummy pillar. Uh, let me, you know what? Let me try just googling this and see. Uh, <clears throat> see what this means. Top file. Most infrastructure made of group machines. Each machine is in group performing a role similar to others. Those groups of machines work in con concert with each other, create application stack. To effectively manage those groups of machines, an administrator needs to be able to create roles for those groups. For example, a group of machines that serve a front-end web traffic may have roles which indicate that those machines should have all Apache server package installed this file which includes a mapping between groups of machines on the network and configuration roles should be applied to them is called the top file. Top files are named top SLS by default and they are so named because they always exist in the top of the directory hierarchy. Directory hierarchy is called the straight state tree. Thank you folks for creating another set of terms because we don't have enough terms. Um, so yeah, you know, like YAML, let's call YAML file SLS file because we can. Um, and then let's call those estate trees because we can. Top files have three components, environment, target, state tree directory containing a set of um, state files to configure systems. So I'm reading this, I have no idea what this means. Target, group of machines, which will have a set of states applied to them. Okay, so this seems like an Ansible group or something. A list of state files to apply to the target. Okay, but in this we can describe a scenario in which all systems or all minions which uh, with an idea that begins with web uh, have an Apache state applied to them. All minions with minion IDs that begins in web. Uh, okay, so this is a targeting the minion. Okay, so we ha right now we have only dummy minion. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, we say that we are going to apply state file named Apache SLS. So in this case, we are going to say that okay, on dummy, uh, we are going to apply dummy pillar, which uh, I don't know what it is doing, but it's fine. Uh, okay. Our top files, pillars. Dev environment specified. In this scenario, the high state resides are invoked. We solve 
Okay, no, I don't want to go through all of this. I just want to get something up and running. Um, okay. Okay. This, okay, this is config of master. Uh, we went through this. This is config of proxy where we specify uh, where where is the master. Uh, now states. Okay, I also don't understand what this SLS file means, but I will create it anyway. So state, so is it what, test SLS. Yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah, I think I kind of start getting some understanding of like how different pieces work together, but it's definitely not complete. So um, let's do this. Um, yeah, we will have to recreate. Uh, we will have to recreate. Uh, yes, this. Oh, actually. This will not work. Because. Uh, yeah, let's, let's let, walk me through this. So we have our Docker compose file, which says, okay, like my proxy ID, we are passing it as a proxy ID, which will be in this case R1. Um, this proxy says that, okay, when you know, when you are up, up communicate with soap master, this config of the master, it has pillar and it has states. Now, I guess this proxy ID will be the name or of the um, like registered name on the master. Okay, so um, if I have here top, which says uh, target dummy, it will look for proxy ID called dummy, like in local, I don't know, cache, whatever, right? And then it applies dummy pillar. <sighs> okay, pillar is an interface for so designed to for global values that can be distributed to minions. Pillar is a data management similar to say it's salt tree. <sighs> Starting state data in pillar. No, this seems to me like, like kind of like connector type or something. Um, kind of like an Ansible connection. You have local or a network CLI. So proxy, proxy type is dummy. So this is kind of like, like a connection module, I guess. Um, but again, if the targets says here dummy uh, when we are registering on master we will not be able to see it yeah okay let's leave it like this let's run this and let's check the logs for the master uh, so if we, we say docker logs assault master um, well I actually don't see any re registration here uh, oh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. I have to uncomment this. Okay, let's run this again. Folks are very quiet today. Okay, let's run this. So let's look on uh, proxy logs first. So I guess this will say. Okay, there is some timeout. But we, at least we uh, we have different error. It's trying to connect to 4506 port on this host. Um, connecting to the minion to the to master URI for the return server. So I think we also see some things here. Okay. So something is happening here too. It's not what I expected. This old monster has accepted one minion key. Okay, this... Uh, let me go back to here to docker compose file and check. So proxy minion is shut down. But no proxy key found in pillar or ops for ID. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So now this makes sense to me. So uh, we have a master and we have a proxy. Okay, so we first load the master, load the configuration, blah, blah, blah. Then we load proxy. Proxy says, okay, here is the like, IP address of master which was salt minus master, which was a uh, host name. Uh, we are communicating on port 4506 saying that, okay, I am R1, okay? Now, if you look on the uh, uh, this top pillar, we see that there is no, there is no um, target for R1, right? So if I change this to R1, uh, I don't expect it will reload automatically. Ticola Nesla, hello, how are you doing, sir? So I guess we'll have to um, bring everything down and up again. This topping is very, very time consuming. Okay, so up minus D. Okay, so now we are, we, we did that, so let's check the logs. Okay, this one, this ID can be explicitly set. Uh, 
I was expecting that there would be some kind of um, some kind of lock for registration or something. Um, Um, what is your opinion about serverless architecture? Okay, interesting question. Um, I had uh, I had a quick look because, uh, well, let me put it this way: I had zero experience with serverless um, so far, but recently a friend of mine um, asked me, and um, I kind of start started investigating the whole thing because obviously I heard you know every every week someone tells serverless um, and I also looked on like implementation on uh, like how would you deploy serverless on um, something like AWS um, My feeling is that it's an interesting idea, but it's um, at least with the tooling that currently is provided by cloud providers, it's not mature yet. For example, if you want to do serverless with AWS, you have to upload. Um, and let's say you have some custom dependencies, you have to you have to install all of your dependencies, then archive them uh, in like proper 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 shape in proper directories, upload to S3, and then you will be able to run that. So this is like the first piece. I honestly don't feel like it's it's a good way like. If they will be providing some easy way to manage all of that, maybe. But yeah, also I heard a lot of very mixed opinions about the cost. So for some people, um, it wasn't expensive who were doing some simple stuff. And for other people, it was super expensive, like very expensive. So. Um, and if I go back to the like thing with dependencies, if you have some kind of like dependencies like this, you already will have to spend a bunch of time to be able to deploy serverless. How much different it, it will be than you just have a virtual machine that you manage on your own. So I do see some use cases for that. But I'm not, uh, I have very mixed opinion about that. I don't think it's mature yet. I don't think cloud providers um, are there yet with serverless. It's like proper tooling around serverless. Um, there are some tooling for, for it like from third parties, like there is serverless framework and then there is this uh, Python project, which I forgot. Uh, Damn, how, how was it named? Let me see. So, um, Python serverless. Um, Zappa. So, Zappa looked very interesting to me. So, it seems like a tooling that should have been done by like AWS or Azure, but was done by third party open source community. Uh, so, this looked this looked interesting um but so far i'm not sure yet it's worth it for at least for my use cases like i don't have a problem managing a virtual machine especially if i'm deploying everything in docker it, it's not a problem and the whole serverless i mean it still runs somewhere on the server it's just it's not managed for you right uh, well, it is well. It is managed for you. You don't have to manage it on your own. Also, the whole API gateway 
thing that I was reading about was very confusing. So, so far I'm not bought on the idea, but worth exploring, I guess. I'm not sure, uh, so the comment is, I'm not sure either, I'm currently investigating to and deployment process feels strange. Yeah, I agree with you, it's just, uh, I think it it's good to be aware of what it is and maybe actually try deploying some kind of like pet project on it. Maybe understand like where it fits in like um, the whole, you know, IT slash development world. Uh, what kind of pricing would you expect for that? Maybe it would be worth it. But again, then there is this piece of deployment and even if you have like um, if it's cost-effective solution when you run it, don't forget about the time sp uh, and money spent on DevOps resource, right? Who will be uh, managing for your deployment process there, right? You have to build that kind of aut automated deployment there. Um, so you will need to pay salary to your Dev DevOps guy to be able to, to spend time to learn it. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, I don't know. Um, right now, I'm not. I'm not convinced. At least for my needs, I, I don't think it makes sense. Um, but yeah, sounds interest. Sounds like an interesting idea. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Um, okay. So I was looking on the logs for sold R1. Let's uh, look here. What did we get? So we loaded private key. We read some config. Um, I have no idea what this means. What this means. Okay, reading configuration. I don't see any kind of like confirmation that we are good, but the fact that it's still up and running and it didn't crash seems like we are good. Um, so let me see, salt master. Sure, absolutely, anytime. Um, this salt master is says okay. So on salt, it seems like we are saying that okay, this minion is good. Um, okay, so. Now, Mircha says that, okay, now run a test state from master side. Uh, Docker exec IT salt master bash. Uh, yeah, okay, so. Um, <clears throat> let me do this. Uh, Docker exec salt master. Um, Salt dummy state apply uh, test. Um, okay, this did work. Oh, okay, yeah, I know why. So, salt dummy. So, dummy seems to be a target, and then we are specifying what states we are going to apply. So uh, remember, I renamed this to R1. So um, let me try R1 now. Yeah, nice. I got my first salt something up and running. So <laughs> R1, yeah, it works. Function, uh, this function. The succeed result through success. Okay, we got somewhere. Um, not very exciting, but yeah. Okay, let's, so I think we are done with this example. Easily start this network automation. Um, OK, 
Okay, I don't need. I don't think we need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Um, this is a Reddit thread that I was investigating. Okay, um, you know what, if you just Google for salt and network automation, this guy seems to be the only one who's using that, so uh, now I'm not surprised when on Twitter I see him promoting the salt uh, for network automation all the time, I don't see any kind of other people sharing their thoughts on salt but that's all right um everyone can have their own opinion so uh okay so this is from 2016 why so how did it look before napalm salt is presented how to use okay let's try taking this well Actually, I already have this, right? So for Napalm Pillar, I have here Napalm as my IP address, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's so way to go. Uh, okay, Napalm Proxy Documentation. Let's look on that. Proxy Minion for managing network devices by Napalm. Napalm proxy module requires Napalm library to be installed. Uh, please check installation to complete details. It is recommended to use Napalm 2.0. Napalm proxy configuration requires. Napalm proxy configuration requires. I lost it. Um, it's Nippon proxy configuration requires the following parameters driver, host, username, pass VD. Let me. Oh! It's pass VD now. This field may not be mandatory when working with SSH based drivers, but the username has a SSH key. Okay, so now it says it should be pass VD. Okay. Pass VD, optional argument, support. Example using a user specific library extending Napalm capabilities, custom Napalm base. Proxy, proxy type, driver, FQDN. FQDN. Um, IP address or FQDN alternatively, the following. Okay. You can use hostname, host. Uh, FPGN IP uh, okay blah 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 okay getting the release of I need a com command executed when running under Napalm proxy minion supports the first reconnect magic argument proxy min minion generally establishes a connection with the remote network device at the time at the minion startup and the connection is going to be used forever Excuse me. Um, did the various use cases enable to identificate? Say attack access not available. It applies to updating pillar data and starting proxy minion process restart. In particular cases like that, you can pass force reconnect true. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, okay, what is this? So this seems to be proxy napalm alive, proxy. proxy Napalm call. Okay, okay, this seems to be stuff like I was doing state apply, but I need to say salt proxy name. I need examples.
Okay, this is the same thing. Napalm Salt module, a module for rendering network automation and orchestration using salt. Install salt. Uh, okay, we already have installed. Install Napalm, it should be installed. Configure salt proxy and minion. Um, minion to tell the proxy process that the local machine is a salt master and turn off multi processing. You can add this to the top of your salt proxy file. Um, okay, we already have this and we have this. Configure the connection with the device. The master config files expect same pillar to be in surf pillar. Um, <clears throat> Next we need to create a top SLS file device ID which tells the salt master which minions uh, receive which pillar. Create and edit this. Uh, will be the name used to interact with the device. Device SLS file name is a file name of the file containing specifications of the device. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and change this now. So um, let's see. So we need top file. Here we will say name uh, R1. Here we will put it dummy. So when R1 registers, it will use name on pillar. Uh, router one is the name used to interact with the device. So salt router one test pink, um, and um, is a file containing specifications of this device. Pay attention to the structure. Notice that router one pillar portion of the top SLS file is missing. The SLS extension. If you had a line, by the way, I, I also must admit, and I already hated this in Ansible, but I hate stuff like this. Like, you know, oh, you have to specify pillar, but it must be without this extension. And if it will be with extensions, then it will not work. Like, this just makes me okay. Like, oh, I have to remember that I must not have a SLS file. Which, by the way, they should have just named the YAML file. Um, base one, router one. One last thing, I'm referring to pillar file as a router one pillar in this example to make it explicitly clear that the last line is referencing the pillar file, but it's more common to call a pillar file the name of the device itself. Okay, so, so far, here's my understanding. You have salt master, you have salt minion, salt minion, um, well, both of them are up. Salt minion registers to salt master. Salt master contains um, a mapping between the uh, proxy ID for, the, for your minion and the list of pillars that I guess will like establish connection or something. So. When we are talking about Napalm, when R1 minion registers on master, we, I think we will run this, or maybe we'll run this when we will use Napalm for the first time. Um, and then we will be, yeah. And the pillar itself just specifies uh, details about connection itself. So yeah, this is just this. Now that we have referenced the router on pillar, uh, we need to create it and add pillar. Okay, so we, we create this. Um, where is the driver? Is Napalm? Okay, so this is kind of like Ansible connection type or something like this, or sometimes Ansible module. And this is would be like, you know, details. Uh, okay, we have this. Make sure the pillar is valid YAML file but pillar is a SLS file. Um, okay, so if there persists, run the following console um, and ask, no, I think we are good. Secret, list of optional arguments per driver. Okay, uh, we will start in this running proxy as a service. Uh, we don't need this. Uh, start proxy minion for your device. We, uh, we are already having that. 
this is normal test your configuration okay once the key has been accepted restart the proxy in debug mode and separate start separate terminal session in new terminal issue the following command sudo start uh, target test ping substitute your device id for core okay let's go ahead and do this uh, so um, and by the way i will um, run this as well and i will do show line show line so i have two uh, devices here right now well show line include star uh, backslash star yeah so show line include backslash star so i can see how many ssh sessions you will be using and if we are going to get connected we will allocate the line uh, the bty so uh let's go ahead and change okay so this one is our one napalm pillar um we will change this napalm pillar um a little bit so i want to name it r1 and i'll say here now let's just put it with big letters r1 uh and then we will say r1 pillar okay uh i don't think we need this but okay so uh we have to uh we have to reload all of this stuff let me see if there are any comments in the chat no we are good Okay, so right now the stream is running for two hours. I must tell you, this is uh, is a little bit less time that we got to like simple example up and running with salt rather than with Ansible. Um, but also at that point in time, I had less experience with all of these DSL tools. So um, maybe, maybe because of that. That said, learning this all of the new concepts in this tool i don't know i would prefer that we had some common terminology in the industry that we used instead of every single tool is naming things differently like not supposed to have playbooks and modules and connections and you know maybe like Playbook seems like the only foreign concept here though in salt every single piece is it's has its own separate name like pillar SLS file state You're not making it easier for users folks um, Okay, so uh, let's check that our containers are up and running They are so now there then let's use um, what let's say salt this test pink okay so in order to run this we will have to say um docker exec salt master salt r1 and then test pink test pink yeah hoo -hoo. we we uh successfully got connected to the device and i can confirm that you have a sage session right here perfect um that's some good news i am happy to hear that so let's continue checking the naval more um sync it should return true if everything checks out hit ctrl c and restart all proxy as daemon uh i have that finally sync your packages what um okay i will do that but i don't understand why i have to do that um so oops um 
so salt master salt r1 uh, salt util sync all I am going to um, bear with me folks I am going to add some of this stuff to uh, my notes because I will forget the second I will stop the stream so I would like to at least copy these commands Okay, I don't understand what this does, but let's actually try googling this. So, salt util modules manage to manage the state of the salt minion itself. It's used to manage minions modules as well as automate updates to the salt minion. Um, okay, I don't understand what exactly it means. Update. Sync down all dynamic modules from the file server from the file server for a specific environment. This function synchronizes custom modules, state beacons, grains, returners, output modules, renders, and utils. Um, I still don't get it, but okay. Start using salt. Everything is set up now. You just need to start issuing commands to retrieve uh, set properties. For the list of updated list of functions, check the following resources. Uh, Nepal network props and MP BGP. BGP. Uh, let's try doing that. I like here though the dot notation. It seems cool. <laughs> um, okay, so salt R1, let's say. I don't think we have BG. Uh, maybe we actually have some BGP configured. I don't remember. Uh, which we don't. Okay, so. Okay, then not not BGP, but maybe ARP table um, and or interfaces. Let's let's do interfaces first. So net dot interfaces. So net dot interfaces. Okay, wow, it's actually it's actually run the way I expected it to run. So. Okay, comment out. Okay, R1 out. Um, okay, so this is the data from Napalm itself. Results true. Uh, let's see. Um, show. Um, no, let's go to my device. Show IP out. So let's say I would like to see zero zero zero. So I wrote that show this. Not implemented there. Okay. Get row two is not implemented for the Napalm uh, iOS driver. Thank you. To share consistency across the network, states are your friend. To use a state, it's quite straight up forwards when the module is already provided. There's a couple of states already available for um, NTP, SNMP users, and props. Um, props, what is it? Is it SLA? Uh, configuration enforcement for NTP peers, example, 
Now when running the command below, so it will check if on your device NTV peers are set up as specified in the pillar file. If not, we'll add a missing NTP peers and we'll remove the access. Thus, at the end of operation, the list of NTP peers configured uh, blah blah blah. Okay, so um, I would like to see the docs for that. Uh, net NTP managed manage the configuration of NTP peers and servers SLS example. Uh, let me copy one additional piece. So we were running state apply test. Manages the configuration of NTP peers and service on the devices specified in state SLS file NTP entities not specified in this list will be removed. Um, I'm thinking if it would be a good idea to try this out since um, let me see um, I have to create I have to check NTP server but I need to check it very carefully though so bear with me folks for a second here so <clears throat> I'll check if I can change NTP server on this uh, lab machine um, I think so but I'm not 100% sure yeah so we have a couple servers they're configured uh, so yeah I, I think we would be able to change NTP server um, but before doing that I would like to kind of like walk through all of the other stuff that is available SNMP config SNMP users I would like not to check I would like not to try users because we may delete our own user and then I will not be happy. I will not be able to log in. <laughs> um, start using so no. Where is this? I'd like to see users though first. So uh, napalm users module salt modules napalm users module um, okay users dot config okay let's go ahead and try this so yeah users dot config okay I have user Cisco and I have user WW, which is correct. Uh, delete users. Remove users from the configuration of the network devices. Dictionary. Formatted as uh, an output of the function. Try run. Default false. Commit. Which config exception? Okay, let's let's uh, go ahead and delete user www, or maybe you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, can we create a user here? Um, set users. Dictionary formatted as output. I'm a little bit scared to do that, but I don't think this this particular module does a replace. It just seems to be configuring the users. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. No, I will just configure the user manually, uh, or or not. No, I think I I can do that. So. Let's 
set users. Okay, I may regret about doing this big time, but whatever. Uh, so let's say uh, stream, and then um, this will have. I will set what password, I guess. So password, password, whatever. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Thinking. It's taking too long. Don't delete my current users, please. Don't delete my users. I, I still need my users. Okay, I on my device I hear actually see a change. I see a log message that my, there was a configuration change. Uh, Okay, so this didn't work. Config template set users not found in search bus. Um, cannot execute load template as Cisco reason. Config template set users G2 not found in search bus. Wow, okay. Here goes, you know. Oh, and they still use Python to seven. Okay then. Um, Nick template set users J two not found in search bus. Um, Okay, let's do docker uh, exec salt minion r1 um, and let's do lsla. No such what? No, what do you mean? No such container. Uh, Oh, so proxy. Proxy R1. Nice. So uh, users, set users is gone. Um, but there is set set host name and then there is set NTP service. Um, okay. Well, I think I can actually try the set, set NTP servers. Um, um, I do have some configured, but I I can't show it show them to you. Uh, so set NTP servers. Well, if you look at this, there is no not a lot of magic here, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so it seems that set users is not implemented for iOS. Okay. Set users. Config. Let me see, just, I would like to see what Junos uh, has here. So let's lay napalm, let's say Junos. 
well they have a little bit more but honestly it's not like a lot more delete ntp servers delete sla snmp users host name okay but i must tell you though if you can see if you can look at this closely there is no magic quick on here right it's just ginger template you know it's it's kind of the same if you write your own ginger. Um, let me look on the delete one. No, not delete one. Let's yeah, let's let's look on delete one just just for example. Okay, so if this is defined in servers and uh, blah blah blah, okay. Uh, are there any comments in the chat? No. Chat is uh, very quiet today. Uh, okay, so what do we have for LS? Delete NTP servers, delete this name, you can fix set hostname. You know what? Let's try set hostname. Um, so. I guess this will be this. Apt um, stream. And this will be Uh, salt modules, uh, salt modules, uh, napalm hostname or network, uh, hostname, facts, nope, nope, nope. Oh, they don't have it here, I guess. Nope. Okay, no users. And I, this users module doesn't support iOS. Okay. I think I can try doing set NTP peers. Um, NTP set peers, okay. No, uh, set servers. So NTP set servers. And we'll say, oh, by default, this function will commit config changes if I need to load without con. Okay, so uh, you just provide a list of those, okay, and I'll say one, two, three, four.
Okay, I see. I see on the left hand side that there was some change. Uh, and I see that something was applied at least two times. Three times. Wow. So I see on my device, I see three configuration changes. Well, at least log logs about config changes. Four. Four? You're gonna be kidding me. So, uh, yeah. And now it says div NTP server one, two, three, four, five. Um, someone promised me speed and blah 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 right now we waited at least for 40 seconds and I see on my uh, device in the log four uh, messages about configured conf about uh, configuration change for for adding one NTP server um, So if I do show run, I um, NTP one two three four. It's the server is there, right? All other servers are there untouched, and it, this operation took forty seconds. So okay. Now I want to try configuring gets an MP, but I will regret about doing this. I will tell you this. I will regret. Um, okay. Uh, I don't think there is anything about communities on this box. No, there is, there is absolutely zero config. So we can con configure like something uh, parameters community dictionary having phone key mod are okay so let's uh, try configure SNMP so it will be SNMP update config <clears throat> uh, and it says it should be what it should be a dictionary So update config, this will be a dictionary, we will say community and this is another dictionary um, where these have to say mod, mod um, let's say RL and um, let's say what? Uh, ECL. Wait, what? Dictionary having the following optional keys. Um, how do you specify community string though? Community location test commit commit false ECL. I don't see here community. Well, there is this community, and it says it's a dictionary having the following optional keys. But how do you specify the community itself? Just by doing this? Okay, let me try doing this. Uh, string.
Okay, I see um, on the left hand side I, I have console connection to the to my router. I see one config change so far. Um, I have two changes now and now it says unable to render and now this fails. Uh, Cannot load, load, unable to render ginger config template as an amic config unicode object has no attribute iter items. Okay, I guess then, uh, yeah, I, I guess this should be uh, something like this. But I am not sure about how do you specify the key so in order to do that i will have to look inside of the this folder so docker exec um salt proxy r1 um lsla And I'm using module SNMP config, so I have to look inside of that. Uh, okay, let's look on this. So we say, I'm looking for community. Mm -hmm. Community is a dictionary. Okay, this is community is a dictionary where you have a key which will be your community string, and commu uh, and uh, that will be in details. Okay, so I can definitely say that this this documentation is wrong, right? It has. It doesn't say where to put community string. It says community optional. A dictionary having the the following optional keys. Uh, yeah. So the way they want this to be is this. I guess this should work. Okay, I see one change on my device. Uh, another change. When I say change, I mean I see console log about changes. Um, I see some error which is an expected end of configuration file but nothing else okay and then there is four okay so four changes I see four changes four is like one two three four right to change community string um, and well this doesn't make sense to me as well since i didn't put any chassis id um what okay let's uh, go to my device and let's run this command <laughs> okay this is bad mm. <laughs> this was applied as chassis id
yeah. I guess I did it incorrectly. So I guess it should be. Let me look on the template again. So why it was put in the chassis ID? I think it's because it is a first. No. If chassis ID. Okay, so this is like the first argument, so we put it there. Yeah, okay, makes sense. So, yeah, I applied it incorrectly. So, the way I should apply this would be. Uh, this. Hopefully. Um, and remember that we already ran it for at least 20 or 30 seconds before I started this. I see at least five changes on my device on the left. Uh, and then it, it didn't work. Okay, so it took almost two minutes. Okay, config merge failed, automatic rollback attempted whatever this goes for <laughs> for SNMP community strings this time I'm pretty sure that I got I got I got it right um, I mean on CLI I don't understand why it's trying to like put the line like this but if you look on this template right so we put here community which should be a dict where you have a key and you have details and in the de details it sh it's uh, another dictionary oh I see now there is just problem here there is here uh, this is incorrect uh, it should be should be a cnmp server community string so it's actual problem is the template <laughs> okay so we still have some time maybe like 10 or 15 more minutes i will try a couple of more things here uh but um I can just laugh at this, I'm sorry folks. Um, like we can manage network configuration state easy and blah blah blah. Um, I don't see it. it's working. I see like problems everywhere here, so um, so far I'm not convinced, uh, but I, I will do like a summary when we will finish the stream. Um, there are a couple of things that I like though. Okay, so SNMP update config didn't work. 
Uh, let's call some. Uh, let's try th something else. And I have too many tabs open that I don't remember which one I need to use. Okay, I don't need this anymore. Uh, I don't need this anymore. Um, I don't think I need this anymore. You can also do this, but this seems like a very hard way to run this. Uh, Nippon call. Um, yeah, let's, we can try this as well. Um, so this will be what napalm.call. Um, calls a specific method from the network driver instance um, method and params. I think I will need to do I'm not sure I will get this right maybe commands and then show version Please enter a valid list of commands. Can it command uh, sleep on 1048-1830? Please enter a valid list of commands. Um, I don't know how to call this. I mean, this is clearly an example of Python code itself, but from like this CLI, I do not know how to call it. Um, maybe on Napalm GitHub page. So Napalm um, uh, salt. Uh, napalm call No, I, I don't see it here. Okay. Um, okay, for now I would like to... You know what, let's also get like ARP and, mo and maybe a ODP for test. So this will be net LDP Okay Mac well it's router I will not be able to see anything but ARP should be there Okay Though I, I don't understand what this means um, okay, 
And I'm not sure if I have any SLA props configured. No, I don't. Okay. So let's leave this configuration. In the pillar file of the device, append the following clients. NTP peers, this. Now when running the comments below, the salt will check if on your device NTP peers are set up as specified in the pillar file. If not, we'll add a missing NTP peers and we'll remove access. Okay, I would like to try this though. Uh, so in the pillar file of the device, append the following clients. In the pillar file of the device, append the following clients. Okay. So R1 pillar, so proxy, NTP, uh, in our case it will be like servers, and I will leave those servers. Now when running the command below, salt will check if on your device NTP peers are set up as specified in the pillar file. If not, we'll add the missing NTP peers and we'll remove access. Uh, okay, and now... State SLS. It seems to me that this should be not in pillar file. Uh, it should be in state file, but I am not. I'm not an expert, so I don't know. Salt, blah blah blah. State SLS router NTP. Um, okay. I think I will need to restart my um, uh, my master or slave or both of them. Uh, I I don't know. So history grab. SLS uh, oops I'm pretty sure this will not work but because then I don't I mean if this works then I don't understand the difference between states and pillars my understanding is that states is kind of like this well what it means state and then it should be put in this folder uh, and then i would say state well state is less i also don't understand what the router word means here The pillar file of the device spent. Minion one minion didn't return. Okay. Maybe I have to um, do update. Proxy died. It died. Okay, so uh, I 
Okay, now this worked. Okay, let's try this. No matching SLS found for router.intp in env base. No matching SLS found for router in env base. Yeah, so I do not know where to put this. <sighs> State SLS router NTP in the pillar file of the device append the following lines Okay, this is what I did. Now, when running the command below, so it will check if on your device the NTP peers are set up. Okay, I'm doing exactly like it is here. It feels to me that I'm missing something, but I don't understand what. Maybe. No, notice. Okay, um, I do not know how to solve this. My thought experience is not enough. I was trying to follow, it didn't work. So, um, as we are almost out of time, I will continue working through this uh, but I'm not going to test any of those so configuration enforcement for NTP we tried this didn't work um, this schedule state maintaining configuration updated using the capabilities of the states and schedulers you can ensure the configuration of the device is consistent and up-to-date yes you don't need to jump into the box and manually execute the command or add alias is file license config is all of you need to write Okay, so basically what this is, is a cron for your, for your uh, salt task, let's put it this way. Um, other module salt comes with many flavors of modules, complete references there. There are a few others such as reactor, no, oh. This, this this could be useful though. Uh, state stop SLS. Yeah, so oh okay, so there, there is this router in TPSLS. So yeah, now it kind of makes sense where this router is coming from. I think I should not look on this separate and I should just walk or look on the salt stack docs. So salt proxy napalm. Um, Manage configuration of NTP and servers of the network device through the Napalm proxy. We 
Requires net other to be installed. Requires. Okay, I would like to try it, at least this one. Now I think I, I got it that uh, those those were for documentation for napalm salt, but then it got integrated into the core and now the documentation resides here. So, uh, makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, okay, so servers SLS example here. Uh, so this should be state. I think so. Um, I will just have test. And then I don't need peers, but I need servers. And then I will leave it like this. Uh, SLS example. I actually think that should be this way. Um, also, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me since it's not really a list, but you know what? I will leave peers as well. Okay, so it's test SLS. Um, so then it would be like what state supply history grab state supply. Yeah, state apply and then name of SLS. Okay, so uh, I guess I will have to say maybe this first, even though I still don't know what it does. Um, and then I will say state SLS and then I will say test. Minions return with non IT in SLS test is not ID net NTP managed in SLS test is not a is not a dictionary. Wait, what? ID net NTP managed in SLS test is not a dictionary. Okay. Um, File is this, uh, this is the name of what we are going to do. And then state apply net tools. Okay, we will apply everything. As you might have guessed, you can use targeting mechanism. Okay, I think I understand now. So um, this should be like a name of my task. Uh, as a key, so this will be checking to be uh, validating NTP servers. Okay. This takes more time, so it seems it ran, or it is running right now. So, oh, let's do my stopwatch thing, right? So again, we were like maybe 15 seconds running this already. Um,
I see two changes already on the device. I see three changes. Four. Okay, so 50 seconds plus like 15 seconds before I started, so around one minute. So now it says remove this NTP service and add those. If I go to my device, if I do and show run um, INTP. Uh, what? Okay, it says succeeded, added, but I don't see this. Well, dating NTP server is functioning and NTP managed. Cannot retrieve NTP peers from the device. It's not implemented for the Napalm IS driver. Duration 73 seconds. Okay. Server is added. So, folks, I. I am honestly speechless. So it says here succeeded, failed zero, and you can look on the device. There is there is no all of my previous NTP servers were deleted, and I don't see any new NTP servers. I'm I'm. I want to say very unpleasant words right now. Because this is actually one of the worst scenarios possible, one of the worst possible outcomes. You say to your programs that okay, you have to configure, uh, you have to make sure that only these NTP servers are configured. It goes ahead, deletes everything that is there, and applies nothing. Not only that, the tool reports that it succeeds. It succeeds. Okay, um, I'm actually ma making sure that I'm on the right device and I am on the right device, so wow. Um, I'd, I'm not sure what to say anymore here. Like, I mean, even if that happens, you know, I understand like this module is working with CLI and blah, blah, blah. But even if that happens, you can't just, you can't just go ahead and tell me that it succeeded, but then I go login on the device and it says nothing is there, right? It's just, it's, it's not good. Uh, it's, honestly, it's horrible, but um, yeah, I'm going to delete peers for a second and I'm going to leave it as it is right now and reapply this again. Uh, and this will be our last thing that we are going to do. Um, while it's running though, there was one thing um, that I saw that got my attention. The whole like uh, idea behind thought was to have event driven stuff where you react on some events and uh, something that piqued my interest was the integration with napalm log and if i understood correctly the idea was that uh, with napalm log uh, you configure the like i guess proxy minion with napalm log uh, as your ntp server or with, as your syslog server and then all of your logs are sent there. Napalm log can convert all of the logs to structured format. And then in your salt, you, you can define um, basically an event for the log. So like if this log happened, then uh, uh, we are going to do X, right? Um, 
yeah if like this log happened then we are going to apply this config change or something like this so that part actually is very interesting i do not know where documentation for that is so if i say uh, napalm um, log salt i don't well actually there is something using napalm logs for when doing uh, automation what is napalm logs it's daemon napalm logs where is the message is available installation how to start when to use and napalm capabilities are directly spotted in salt um, okay so this yeah this is seems uh, like a something that is interesting uh, but this seems to be the only example that is available there is this docs page so yeah maybe maybe um, but this is something that is not available I guess in Ansible so I guess it's worth taking a look but I don't think I'm going to explore this on the stream uh, meanwhile this this uh, finished it also took 71 seconds uh, very fast well this time at least I see NTP servers okay previous time we were in an partial state where the thing said um, it succeeded but as the end result we didn't have any NTP server which is actually a disaster from my perspective um, so um, yeah right now when we deleted peers it actually added it successfully uh, so yeah uh, I don't see any comments well there are not many people uh, left to watch the stream but that's fine um, so let's do a summary and wrap up for today today we were taking a look at salt which is uh, event driven automation net, uh, automation framework um, we were trying to apply salt for network automation so it has quite different architecture compared to ansible um, i do have um, well so you have uh, here salt master and for every single network device you will need uh, salt proxy minion um, so salt proxy minions are themselves uh, like forex uh, python processes uh, that are run when they are up they are communicating with the uh, salt master to let them know that okay i am i'm ready um, we were taking a look on integration between um, the uh, uh, napalm and uh, salt uh, even at that stage we found so many different issues like you know like for config management there is only uh what there is only users i guess available and ntp servers uh snmp uh, template is broken there it's just uh, just plain wrong uh we were trying to set up something else but i forgot uh we were also taking a look on the state management so they have state management for ntp again so you can specify the list of NTP servers that you would like to have configured, which led to very problematic results where uh, uh, after doing that, uh, we were left in impartial state where all of the previous NTP config was deleted, uh, but the new servers were not added uh, and the, the salt reported that everything succeeded so even like if you set up any kind of um, you know notifications for your failed tasks or something this will not catch it because it reports that everything is fine uh, so maybe i will find this gif everything is fine on fire yeah so uh yeah when when i looked on this output this is the picture that I had in mind 
Um, so um, the different getters to get uh, structured data uh, work actually as expected quite good. So, but I could do the same kind of thing with basically one line of either invoking Napalm from CLI or invoking Napalm from Python script. I don't see like I'm getting a lot. Uh, so in general, the whole network automation is, uh, so it seems to be relying on Napalm, which itself, um, from my perspective, has a very questionable, um, I don't think it can provide you full control over network configuration state, uh, but we already discussed Napalm before. So uh, personally, I haven't found any um, benefit of using salt. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm just not sure what kind of, what kind of business problems you can solve with this as of now without writing a lot of modules because if you can write your own modules for that, you can just write them in plain Python and then use that. Um, the piece that looks interesting though is reacting to the logs. So integration with Napalm log, even though we haven't tested it today, this looks interesting. So you have your Napalm logs, which accepts uh, accept uh, logs as a six log server, parse them, and then based on some message or something, you do some kind of, um, you do some kind of thing. So the, I mean, this capability exists. So this, this is kind of nice, uh, but okay. We haven't tested it again, so I'm not sure how it really works. Maybe it works in a similar way, like on this picture. Um, so yeah, so far I'm not convinced that it makes any sense to use salt even over Ansible. Maybe only if you want to use this event-driven approach. Um, but other than that, uh, actually in Ansible there are much more uh, modules that are developed by Ansible for different uh, network operating systems. And you can use Napalm as well. So there is like just module for Napalm and there is this module for separate network operating systems which were, were written by uh, you know by red hat basically some of them are community based but most of them are by red hat uh, with, uh, and they allow you to actually manage a bunch of different things not only ntp and snmp um, ntp snmp what and users there there are many many more things like interfaces config and uh, uh, routing protocols config and so on and so forth. But even in that case, I don't think it's enough to to have a network, uh, to control network configuration state. So as of today, uh, I'm totally not convinced that this is a tool one should use for network automation. So yeah, but I hope it was useful for you folks hope you were able to learn something new today. I definitely did. Um, I will think when I will have free time, how would I integrate event driven things and like streaming telemetry and maybe logs as well into design of like perfect network automation system. Um, so far, yeah, but that, that capability I have never investigated before, like how would you actually build a system which would react to different events. Um, that is actually an interesting design task set um, that seems relevant. Okay, um, that's it for today. If you have any uh, good ideas for the following streams, uh, make sure you let me know by any means of communications that are listed. Uh, under the under the Twitch page or on my um, on my blog, um, and with that, thank you and have an easy working week. Bye everyone.